Watching this thing shrink, then, Brian, it's almost as if with each storm we've had this season, not every one, but rapid intensification likely. This could be the strongest one we've seen so far this season. Yeah, we expect it will be, Stephen. And this uh, issue with the water temperature there uh, to the east of the Caribbean is a real thing. It's at record levels. It's more like the Gulf of Mexico than the tropical Atlantic, actually. So tribute to the strength thing, besides the fact we're right near the peak of hurricane season and right on cue, the atmospheric conditions are very, very conducive. All right, let's take a look at the wider view here. Here you see the islands here. Here clearly you see the developing storm. And the main thing to look at here is you see this arm sticking up this way, rotating in there, and you see another one down here. When you see of inflow from both directions like that, that tells you that the atmospheric uh, conditions around the storm are quite conducive for strengthening. So that's what we're seeing. Taking a look at that close up, as you were talking about, it has a solid core developing. I expect that by this afternoon, this will be Hurricane Lee, and it will be on its way uh, by the weekend to be a very, very strong hurricane. When we look at the model winds, so how it's portrayed, if you can remember, a, a Dell yet sometimes the center was not lined up with the satellite you see everything is quite lined up and look at the size of the circulation here this is a big circulation so the storm is not going to have to come right over top of the islands or the coast or any place else in order to feel effects so a lot of of areas i think are going to feel effects from this storm the uh, question is exactly what the effects are going to be and we're just going to keep an eye out for that. So here's the new cone as of the 11 o'clock Eastern Time Advisory from the Hurricane Center. And you see by tomorrow morning, a 90 mile an hour storm, probably a hurricane uh, later on today, and then quickly intensifying up. And they peak it out at 150 miles per hour, a strong category four. And could it be category five? Yes, it could. I mean, that's all kind of in the noise at that point. Uh, and the, the intensity is likely to go up and down when you get a super strong hurricane. It doesn't maintain that that extra strong intensity normally now Hurricane Irma did in 2017 in this same general area, so it's not impossible, but uh, we expect it will go kind of up and down around some really high number. Now, obviously, the cone keeps it uh, to the north of the islands, uh, and we have confidence about that. But here's the thing about the cone. <laughs> Look at the end of it there. You can kind of imagine that that's kind of an arrow, right? So I can tell you that a lot of folks in Florida are looking at that cone and are very very nervous about it because it kind of looks like an arrow aimed at Florida or the southeast. But that's not what the cone is telling us. The cone is telling us that the storm is expected to be two thirds chance it's going to be maybe even a little bit more than that with the certainty we have in this forecast. Uh, in that circle, imagine a circle at the end of the cone there, that that's where the center is likely to be. It doesn't say anything about the direction of it after it's in that center. And I'm going to show you what the idea is uh, and why we're not concerned for direct impacts in Florida and Georgia and South Carolina uh, here in just a second. All right. So let's take a look at the models. And you can see this gives us confidence when all of the models are kind of clustered inside the cone. There is this UK MET model, which is a little off to the south, which just gives us a little pause to, you know, again, just keep an eye on it in the islands to see if it might get closer. Although the consensus, which is what the National Hurricane Center looks at and bases their cone on, you see, is right down the middle. It's sort of the islands in terms of the worst wind. That doesn't mean there won't be some impacts in the islands, especially in the ocean. But in terms of the worst winds, there is confidence that it is going to stay offshore. And here's a way to, to look at the confidence is this different kind of modeling where you take a whole bunch of different possibilities that are a little bit one way or the other as a starting point over here. So it's a little, each one's a little bit different here, a little different location, and then see where it goes. And notice they all go north of the island. So this gives us good confidence that the core of this hurricane will stay north of the islands and the effects will be uh, fringe effects. So when we actually look at the model, you can see that the strongest winds are up here, but not that far from Anguilla and uh, St. Martin and the northeastern Caribbean islands. But uh, as it stands right now, 
fringe effects, but be ready for some strong winds and certainly very strong surf, big waves and some issues along the coast. Although in those islands that are uh, generally have rocky shorelines and so forth, they're generally not a big uh, issue, but there are beaches. And so anybody at the beach, uh, rip currents, anything like that, it's going to be very, very strong, big surf. Uh, in the islands this weekend. All right, now let's talk about that, um, the, the intensity, first of all. Well, the intensity is, uh, look at these bands here. These are all the different computer the simulations, models of intensity, and look where they all reside up here in this Category 4 pushing Category 5 um, intensity. So when, when we see that, we go, okay, the Hurricane Center now says that this gives us confidence to forecast this super strong Hurricane. Now let's talk about what's going to happen afterward. Here we are back on that track confidence model that I was showing you a moment ago. And notice everything, again, is all kind of up here in this cluster where the Hurricane Center is forecasting it to be in five days. Well, let's go out beyond five days and see what happens. Notice they all want to turn north. So we have confidence that this is not going to be some kind of thing that's going to be a random thing coming toward Florida or something like that. Uh, the uh, high confidence is, and we think we understand why, I'll show you in a second, that the storm is going to turn north in some fashion. But if you noticed when we saw those L's all moving, and all those L's are sort of possible locations at the center, you notice they didn't move very fast. Because in this time frame, when we get uh, late in the weekend, the idea is that the storm is going to kind of stall in this area. And then exactly the angle it takes going north is a bit of an open question. And of course, we're talking about six, seven, eight days in advance. So we're never 100% sure about that. So here's what's uh, going on here in the atmosphere that's causing this uh, to happen. What we have right now is high pressure sitting over the middle of the Atlantic, which we very often do. Uh, called We call it the Bermuda High, essentially. But it's driving Lee in the general west-northwest direction. It's not driving it due west because look at this. Exidalia is sitting up here and that's kind of cut off the nose of the high and that's allowing Lee to gain latitude. In other words, to veer a little bit to the north. So we can thank Adalia, <laughs> what's left of Adalia, for actually not driving this thing directly uh, into the Islets. So, uh, you know, a little bit of good news there. But over time, of course, all this is going to evolve and the high pressure will move in and a dip in the jet stream is coming in here, which is going to want to eventually pull Lee to the north. Now, how does it pull it to the north and what exactly happens? That's an open question. So bottom line is in terms of uh, potential impacts, and this is just for awareness. So first of all, all along the coast, the beaches, and I should have put the behind as well, by the way, and also the Caribbean islands. All the uh, coastal sections facing the hurricane are going to have very high waves, dangerous surf, so everybody needs to be aware of that in the U.S. And now, as we move forward in time, obviously, it'll move north, and that problem will move north. Bermuda needs to stay on alert to see exactly what the track is. Fringe effects in Puerto Rico, as we talked about. And then we're going to watch from North Carolina all the way through New England and actually into Atlantic Canada for potential effects of this. How close is it going to come? No. Could it stay offshore? In any case, along the beaches, it does look indeed dangerous. Just a quick mention of what's going on in the far eastern Atlantic. This uh, invest here is going to affect the uh, islands here, the uh, Cabo Verde Islands, but then it'll move out to sea. And then this is the next one, and it's going to follow Lee on across the Atlantic. So we have definitely more to watch as we head for the peak of the hurricane season. Guys? Watching it carefully. Watching yeah. it very carefully. Brian, yeah. before we let you go, we do want to let we do want to ask you a question here. When it comes to the water temperatures, you mentioned ex Idalia. Where Idalia's remnants are right now, the water temperatures are much cooler. Can that play a factor in the long term forecast? 
Well, Idalia is affecting the long-term forecast because it's wanting to pull lead to the north. The, the, the key of the water temperatures is down there around the Caribbean islands and, and just to the east where Idalia is going to track. They are super warm. The ones in the North Atlantic, indeed, are much cooler now because Idalia churned up all that, uh, all that ocean up there. But that's, that's not going to affect uh, Lee in the short term. And in fact, I don't think that's going to affect Lee really at all because Lee is uh, staying farther south and kind of avoiding that particular path for the most part. As you had mentioned, those sea surface temperatures east of the Caribbean all-time highs or at least record warmth that we have seen, not measured right. before in the modern era. Brian Norcross, you're watching it. We're watching it. Appreciate the insight this morning on Tropical Storm Lee. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.